comes up to Mizzen Shayu to all. Um, and so last week we were doing Exodus and we were studying how Moses went to Mount Sinai and he got the commandments from God. So I wanted to do this song because it's really, it relates to that because he had to go up to the top of the mountain to get that, to get the word, to get what he needed from God. I faced a mountain that I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before Sometimes it takes a mountain To get a hold of me oh, oh. Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes a trouble see Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold of me Forgive me Jesus I thought I could control Whatever life would throw my way But this I will admit Has brought me to my knees I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say, oh, oh, oh. sometimes it takes a mountain, sometimes a troubled sea, sometimes it takes a desert, oh, Lord. To get a hold of me, to get a hold of me, your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain, yes, Lord, to trust you. Sometimes a trouble see Sometimes it takes a desert Oh Lord To get a hold of me Your love is so much stronger Yes, Lord, then whatever troubles me. So sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He ended up a shield of the sea. He ended up a shield of the sea. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes a mountain. <laughs> Sometimes a troubled sea, sometimes it takes a desert. But you can get hold of him. And before we go anywhere this morning, just lift up your hands and thank God for taking you through the mountain experience, the valley experience. When you went through the sea, it didn't drown you. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Lift up your hands and praise him this morning. Praise him like you have no sense. Say, praise him like you saved him from something. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Give him glory, give him honor. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Because you never left us uh, here. You never left us. Uh, you never forsook us. Uh, you didn't forget us. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yay. <laughs> praise God this morning. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah, God, this morning. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we forget. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you did for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can I forget? Thank you, Jesus. So much. So much to give God thanks for. So much to give him praise for. Sometimes we just have to stop and remember where he brought us from. Hallelujah. 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 Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. We glorify you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We thank you, Father God, for your greatness, your great grace and your mercy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for your tender care. We thank you for your mercies which never fail. Hallelujah. We thank you for health and strength and breath in our bodies. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we ask, uh, hallelujah, that you let your sweet Holy Spirit saturate this place this morning, God. I pray, mighty God, that you will let me diminish uh, so that your word will go forth. Hallelujah. Touching hearts, changing hearts, transforming lives. Ah, mighty God, and restoring that which needs to be restored. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. We thank the young praise team this morning. And we thank young Daniel. Hallelujah. For just ushering us into a place of worship this morning. A place where God wants us to be this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Ah, oh, God. I, I, you know something? I wish I could sing. Because if I could sing, I would say, if you want to see the glory of the Lord, why don't you praise him? Hallelujah. But just lift up your hands one more time and give a wave offering unto the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, each and every one, this morning. Thank you for being in the house this morning. Hallelujah. We give honor to the set man of this house, Bishop. Hallelujah. Wayne Jonathan Manning this morning. Pastor Elizabeth Manning this morning. Even as they continue the work, uh, hallelujah, in Jamaica. We just want to recognize them and give God thanks for them. Give them a hand, clap of praise, because we want them to know they're appreciated even in their absence. Uh, hallelujah. Ah, God. So as we ready this morning to, to worship, uh, I just want to remind you that we have been going through the book of uh, the Bible and we've been going through Exodus. Thank you, you can go. We've been going through Exodus and we're at Exodus 20. So it's not really a, a preach. It's not really a jump up this morning. It is a teach as we go through the word of God and we remind us ourselves of where God has brought us from and where he has taken to taken us to. So I thank Daniel particularly for that song this morning. We're in Exodus chapter 20. And I'm reading from the Engl easy English um, translation. Um, and I will just read God's special commands. Verse 1. And then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt the country where you were slaves. You must not have any other gods except me. You must not make any idol for yourself. Do not make a false god in the shape of anything that is in the sky. Do not make one in the shape of anything on the earth or in the sea. You must not bend down your head to any idol or worship it. I am the Lord your God and I want you to belong to me alone. I will punish children because of the bad things that their fathers have done. I will also punish their children and their grandchildren too. That is how I will punish everyone who turns against me. That is how I will punish everyone that turns against me. But I will truly love all those who love me. They are the people who obey my laws. I will continue to love them and their families forever. You must not speak the name of the Lord your God in a wrong way. The Lord will punish anyone who speaks his name in a wrong way. This is verse 7. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it as a special day for me. You have six days every week to do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day. It is special for the Lord your God. You must not do any work on that day. Your son and your daughter must not work on that day. Your servants, male or female, must not work on that day. The foreign person who lives among you and even your animals must not work on that day. In six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth and the sea. He made everything that is in them. But on the seventh day, the Lord rested. So he blessed the Sabbath day and he made it special. Always, verse 12, respect your father and your mother. Then you will live for many years in the land that the Lord your God will give to you. You must not murder anyone. You must not have sex with another person's husband or wife. You must not take another person's things for yourselves. You must not say false things against your neighbor. You must not want to take your neighbor's house for yourself. You must not take his wife or his servants, male or female. You must not take his ox or his donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Those were the commands. The people, verse 18, the people heard the loud thunder and they saw the bright lightning. They heard the noise of the trumpet. They saw the smoke on the mountains. They were so afraid that their bodies were shaking. They would not come near. They said to Moses, speak to us yourself. We will listen to you, but do not let God speak to us. If he does, we will die. 
Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you. He wants you to respect him and to obey him. Then you will not do the things that are wrong. So the people stayed away from the mountain, but Moses walked towards the thick, dark cloud where God was. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it there. I read from the um, plain Bible, plain verse, for a reason. We sometimes become set. I love my King James Bible, and my King James is right here in front of you. But we want to make the word plain to everyone that they may understand who God is and what God says. Amen? So this morning, I'm going to speak to you about setting the house in order. God spoke to his people. <laughs> the Israelites could not be his people unless they placed their trust in him and in no other God. Now, I want to remind you that Egypt was a land of many gods and idols. And after spending 400 years, you imagine, 400 years in this pagan culture where everything seems to have been a dog, a, a god. A frog was a god. The sea was the god. You understand? There were so many gods in Egypt that somehow or other it saturated the very spirit of the, of the Israelites. And it was difficult for them not to start believing in the gods of the people that they saw around them. Because in those 400 years, they were not hearing from God either. But the Lord had warned them before, many times, about worshipping false gods. That he was the one true God, and he was the God who then rescued them from slavery in the land of Egypt. So he took them out with a mighty hand. The last time I spoke with you, I talked about the, the final plague. When God said, I'm going to bring one last plague. And that last plague killed the firstborn of every thing in Egypt. The king's or the pharaoh's child. The, cat, the firstborn of the sheep or the goat or the, the dog. Every firstborn was killed to show that God meant what he said. Let my people go. Amen? Now imagine you've been through that experience. And you come out of it. And not only do you come out of it, but God, the Egyptians then came after the children of Israel. They followed them. Pharaoh and his chariots followed them. And so God said, listen, the Egyptians that you see today, you aren't going to see them anymore. Can you imagine when God says this trouble that comes upon you, you're not going to see it again. It's going to be gone forever. Can you take his word? So then God opens up the Red Sea and lets the children of Israel pass through. And they pass through onto dry land. But the Egyptians follow through. And the Israelites see the Egyptians being drowned. Disappear before their very eyes. Now let me tell you something. You want to praise God? When you see your enemies just destroyed. When you see the things that have beset you destroyed. But yet still... Even despite all that, you hear people then start complaining about missing garlic and cucumber. God's feeding you, but you're still complaining. God's rescued you, but you're still complaining. You used to have to make bricks out of nothing and deliver, but you're still complaining. And many of us are just the same. God has delivered us over and over again. He pulls us out, we put ourselves back in again. He pulls us out we step back in again. By God. If it was man, if it was me, I'd be saying, listen, I'm tired of you. Go on with your mess. And leave me alone. But God is so rich in mercy that he just keeps pulling them out. Pulling them out. Pulling them out. Setting them up. But God decides one day, listen, I've given my instructions and you're not listening. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to tell you myself. Clean yourself up. Fix up. Don't touch this mountain. Don't come close to me. Because I am God. I am holy. And I'm not having your mess up here. I'm going to speak to you. And you're going to listen. And we know that by the end of the 
the scripture that I just read, they said, listen, don't let God talk to us, you know. Because when, you know, when you're a child and your mother says, listen, fix up. I'm going to talk to your father. Fix up. You when daddy come home and tell you, you don't want daddy to tell you again. It takes a few years or a few months before you mess up the way that you messed up. Because daddy has spoken and the house is back in order. Amen? Amen. So that's what we are. God speaks. He comes down. Before the children of Israel went to Egypt, they had the word. They were led by the patriarchs who followed the will and the ways of God. Abraham did. Isaac did. Jacob did. God even took Joseph away from his family and allowed him to go into a pit in betrayal, into a, a Potiphar's house where he was messed up or somebody tried to mess him up. He ended up in prison, wrongfully imprisoned. Listen, it's not the first time black men get wrongfully imprisoned. But anyway, he's in prison. But yet God gave him the gift to be able to um, um, interpret dreams and his gift, you know, said man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. The very gift that God had given him took him before Pharaoh to be able to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had and to become the prince of Egypt and therefore be in a position to help his people, pull his people out, save his people from certain death in the time of famine. So sometimes when we're going through rough times, when we're going through difficult times and we're saying, God, take me out, take me out. Sometimes you don't know what God is setting you up for. So you say, God, give me the strength. Give me the grace. Cover me in this situation and let your will be done even in this. Amen? Because that spoken or unspoken seems to have been Joseph's prayer. He just allowed himself to be used by God and look what happened. Amen? So we're now 400 years later and the children of Israel are out of Egypt and they're in, the, they're in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Now, if God has told you that he is going to deliver you, he has shown you that he's able to deliver you and he's given you a promise, the sensible thing would say you believe it and you just keep going, keep following him, keep following him, keep following him even while he gives you manna to eat. Can you imagine, Sister Mary, that you, 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 you prepare a meal and you feed Deacon Miller and yourself and your family. You eat well, your bellies are full, you're satisfied, you go to bed, you get up the next morning and you don't have to do it all again because it's all there and it's just prepared and you just eat and be satisfied and you go to bed. You don't even have to wash the dirty dishes because it's taken care of. But yet still, you start complaining. I want KFC. I want McDonald's. I want Subway. That's how we are. We complain and we mourn. And the children of Israel were certainly doing the same thing. God brought them out. And he doesn't speak to them as creator God. He speaks to them as the God who loves them. He's their deliverer. And he wants them to just obey my word and let me take you through. He tells them, you shall have no other gods before me, indicating that it is every individual's responsibility to worship God. It doesn't say, your country shall have no other God before me. It says, you shall have no other God before me. So national obedience is not enough. Being in a nation that says, in God we trust, as in the USA, or this country is a Christian country, as we say in the UK, is not enough. We see that, we hear it said, but we don't see the evidence of that. The responsibility for making our nations unto God rests with each and every one of us as individuals. The politicians aren't going to do it. The lawyers aren't going to do it. The doctors aren't going to do it. It is we, the people, who serve an almighty God, and that is what makes us one nation under God. We have a responsibility. God did not speak to the nation. He spoke to the people. Amen? 